y'all Matt here with the Grafted Branch Homestead. So today I have a project this is going to be part of one of two or three um, and what I'm going to be doing is adding uh, light to the quail hutch supplemental light as well as days like today where uh, the weather has really kicked up so I put tarps around the quail hutch area um, so it's kind of dark in there so I need to get this done pretty quickly. Right now I'm piggybacking power off of the chicken coop which is next to it um, but I don't want to strain that solar system. Um, I could just beep it up, but I think this project's going to be fun. Anyways, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together a solar system uh, for the a small one, easy to do one for the quail hutch. It, um, I've decided, I, I thought about putting it in one container um, and different ways to do it, and I think this is what I'm going to do, and I'll explain why. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up this solar system with the solar panel and the lights and then the main components of it in uh, two of these ammo boxes. The reason I decided to do two is I want to make them easy to disconnect and move when I need to clean the hutch to power spray it or if I want to use these for something else you know um, if the power goes off I want to be able to easily unplug one of these bring it inside and I'd be able to charge up my phones and what have you. Um, okay, so with that said, we're going to do this in two boxes. The first box is going to be the battery, uh, the power. This is going to have the input for the solar panel and the output for the 12-volt uh, power. This is also going to have our solar charge controller. I'm using a, a little 20 amp one that I had. I think they're about 15 bucks on Amazon. I'll try and put a link there if I can. Um, but we are going to hook this up into the box. I also have in here a couple of these waterproof um, 12 volt quick disconnect. So we're going to have one of these that the solar panel will plug into from the outside and one of these that the 12 volt power will come out of. Um, we have our battery cable and harness. I have some extra wire. I made this. Um, I'm also, while it's probably not completely necessary, I am going to put in um, some of these little fuses. Now it came with 20 amp fuses. I'm going to need to change that, but for now uh, we will go ahead and install these. And so there's some waterproof fuses, inline fuses. I'm going to cut this. I'm going to put one of these um, going uh, from the, the power coming in from the solar panels and one from the power going out to the 12 volt, um, just for a little more protection in case you have a system overload or something like that. Now, I don't know a lot about electronics or doing this. Uh, this is a complete DIY, just uh, you know, out of my, out of my head. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing, so if you have something to leave in comments, please make it constructive and help me out. Um, but that's what we're going to do. So I got these components. Um, I also have a small little board cut as well as a couple 2x2 two two pieces. And I'll show you how we're going to use those. So let's get to building this first box. Okay, so the first box we have is we're going to use is the battery box. In here, I have a flooded lead acid uh, battery. One of the, the cheaper ones you can get, but they work really well. This is a 12 amp hour. I think it should be fine for what I'm doing. I don't want it, uh, you know, if it's too big, it's not gonna be a problem, but if it's too small in the, the couple cloudy days we do get here in New Mexico, um, I still want the lights to run. So we're gonna slide that in up towards the front of the box. I'm gonna use the back of the box for the ports and I'll label those so they don't get confused, but for the solar in, and the 12 volt out. Go ahead and drill the uh, two holes in the box, the only holes that will be in the box uh, or compromise the weatherproofing. Um, and we will install these. Now these uh, will slide in and screw on. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of silicone uh, seal around the edges to help out with that, um, with the waterproofing. And so the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna take my power drill, I'm gonna take a drill bit uh, find one that's about the width here of this. Now this is a rectangle, so what I'm going to do is just uh, uh, find the proper drill bit, drill two holes in here, and kind of wiggle that in, put some silicone seal, and screw it down. So we'll do that. Thank <laughs> you. 
this is something you can do fairly inexpensive. Um, the solar generators, I guess, you can buy out there, which I think that's a horrible term for them. They're a battery bank and they can be powered by solar. But anyways, the solar generators that are out there are really expensive. They are just out of my budget for sure. Um, this is not nearly enough power to power something large, but it would power a computer, or some cell phones, most certainly some lights as the application we're going to be using it for. We'll silicone this down and screw it in and that will give us one inside and go ahead and put the other one in. I'll end up clipping these wires down and using the extra wire for the things I need to wire up in here. That's why I don't have other wire. Awesome. Cool. So these will work well. I have some of this uh, just silicone sealant that is going to go around the outside. And then these came in this pack with some screws. So I'll gently put those in there and uh, We'll go from there. Start with this one. I'm just putting a 20 watt solar panel on here. So um, you could, you know, hook in whatever you wanted. Obviously, if I use more power, I will increase that. Um, but I think a 20 watt will work just fine for these small little LEDs I'm running. On the chicken coop I do have more because I'm running some actuators and solenoids and water pumps and all those things take quite a bit of uh, more power. But for now at least, on the quail hutch, I will not be doing that. Um, however, with this it's, it's kind of a neat application because this is the power box. The second box is gonna have our timers and wires in from the lights and all that, and we'll build that in part two. Um, but all I would need to do is change out the battery uh, box for a larger one if I wanted. And then plug the controls and the solar panels in, in our kind of plug and play method, if you will. Right. So now I'm going to build the um, board that's going to sit on the battery, uh, keep the battery from sliding around and crushing any of those internal wires and stuff, as well as support the charge controller. And so I've cut a thin little piece of board, scrap board, um, up the size of the controller. And this okay, is so then I'm going to screw these two legs on the end of it, and so the battery will sit under here, and that will keep the height from the battery. And then I have these two little brace boards that will screw on the bottom, and that's going to keep the battery from sliding forward. That's the wire. Okay, <laughs> got the bracket rebuilt. So we will go ahead down here. I'm going to kind of gently slide it in there if I can. That's not the wires too much. Here we go. And that fits perfect. So what that's going to do, as you can see, is those little brackets sitting here keep the battery from moving around at all. So that battery is nice and tight in there now. That's also going to give this plate with a little get, bit of a gap sitting up above the battery that I could put the charge controller onto. And can we shut the lid? Let's see. And yes, the lid will shut. The charge controller is in here. The lip will keep it protected from any buttons. That way all you gotta do is open the lid. You can plug any of your USB devices in here. Um, and then again, if you wanted to plug other devices or an inverter or anything like that, that would plug right into this 12 volt out here. And then you could, uh, you know, modify this cord to uh, go into a little inverter that I have. 
or whatnot if you need a different power. But the majority of what this is going to be used for, well, it's going to be used in the quail coop, but the majority of what I would use it for for other purposes would be uh, USB to charge cell phones or any devices like that. I can also charge battery power banks off that. Um, and I do have an inverter that I can plug in if I need it as well. But this is okay. So now we're going to go ahead and put the charge controller on now that we know this fits. And that's just going to go on the outside there. There we go. And what this charge controller does is it allows power to come in from the solar panels and to charge the battery and then to release power out to the accessory or whatever you have there. Um, it keeps anything from overloading, overcharging. This one does. It will uh, stop that um, and it's going to manage, uh, you know, all of your, your settings there. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip these wires off, oh, right about there, to leave just enough. I'm going to uh, pull them apart, separate them from the black from the red, and I'm going to clip in, uh, clip the red off, cut one of these fuses in, and wire that in. So we'll do that now. Looking at tax, everything included, screws and all, maybe $70 to build this, maybe at the most. So that sure beats, you know, what, what you'll spend a whole lot more on some of the nicer ones, some of the Jackeries or Blue Yetis. Those um, are nice. I still would love to get one of those. Um, I just can't afford one. So this is what we're making do with. I'm fully aware as well that there's a much better way to do these fuses. I'm also going to have a fuse box over here in our accessory box. This is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm somewhat of a prepper, so this is some redundancies and things, <laughs> I guess. Um, okay, so we got our two inline fuses. I'm going to go grab some electrical tape and wrap up those real quick. Those are taped up. Next thing I'm going to do is I had made this little harness, just uh, put some ends on the end of the wire and taped them on. This is for the battery and so I'm going to clip this off oh, about there, attach it, pull it aside and then set our solar charge controller. that on snug let's see where you can see that so our solar charge controller or the really the brains of this thing here okay now anytime you're you're working with solar you always always want to uh, put the battery into the solar charge controller before you do the solar panels if you just connect the solar panel into the controller before the batteries it's gonna fry it out because there's nowhere to put that power the same goes in for reverse, in, in reverse. When you're disconnecting the system, you want to disconnect the solar panel first and then the battery. So you're never feeding power directly into this thing without a storage device. So the first thing we're going to do on here um, is go ahead and hook the battery into our controller. Now we can hold it. Negative, turn that around. Is it? Now the, you could say, hey Matt, why can't I just hook up my cell phone right to a USB port on the battery? Why do I need this solar charge controller? Well, it's gonna help you charge the batteries with solar if you need. It also, um, it's not gonna allow the battery to drain past 50% or to pour, pull more power than that. So it's gonna save your battery, so you're not gonna torch the battery either. Whereas if you were just trying to draw the 12 volt power, I mean, you're gonna cause all kinds of problems. Don't do that. All right, cool. So we got the batteries hooked up. You can see now here on the screen, 
uh, 12.8, 12.9 volts, so that is working. The next thing we're gonna do is hook up our solar panel cords in. Now there is no solar panel on here, obviously, so it's not gonna read anything on there. Um, but that will get that going. Okay. So the first one is the solar, positive and negative, and we'll do the same thing there. And the last one's our accessory or our um, DC out. And so we will put the um, fuse and the cable to our DC out on this side. And that's really about the guts of it. So we have our uh, ch solar charge controller here. All of our wires are in, connected, and they're not loose. We have our two fuses, our two ports, our battery. Everything is nice and neat in here, away from the terminals um, and held into place where it's not gonna be moving around. It. So this is our solar generator. <laughs> um, and we can go ahead and close that up. And we have our silicone sealed ports. I'm gonna grab my label maker and we'll throw a label on here for solar in and DC out. All right, but that's the simple DIY 12, uh, 12 volt, 12 amp hour um, solar generator that will be used to charge the Quail Hutch um, LED lights and as well as, as uh, whatever else you want to use it for. You could plug in 12 volt um, DC power out here to charge any devices there. You could also plug in USBs here. Uh, so give us a thumbs up if you like it and uh, subscribe if you have not and then go ahead and check out our second or our part two video on this where we, will, where we will build our controller unit for the lights and get the whole system operational for you to see.